Now the last part um, I'd like to discuss about the linear algebra and linear equations of the structure of the solutions of inhomogeneous, non-homogeneous equation. I forgot the word. So for example, in the second order case, it looks like this. This is the operator done acting on function unknown function y. And right inside here is function of x, like x or x squared, something like this. So solving this equation, or it can be third order equation, of course. Right, moved up here. The way we solve this one, if you look at operator algebra, of course, um, it'll tell you how to solve it. Um, solve for a one solution or the general solution that's actually ultimate answer but it's very bulky and a lot of uh, calculation go through so knowing that i moved it again the dimension of this thing right shown here dimension of things exactly two then um, if it's a constant case for example p is a constant and q is constant there's a nice easier way to calculate what the kernels um, are and Maybe by inspection, you can figure out one of the functions that uh, becomes a phi x. And then with these things, and you can quickly write down the general solutions here. So here's the idea. So here's the situation. I'm going to call that as a theorem. Suppose we have f1 and f2. That's the generator and m equals 2 case here. That function that generates everything in here, those two functions in the kernel. And suppose by inspection, by accidentally, and whatever the clever method you used, we found one function that goes to phi x. Then we'll write down how the, all the other solutions that uh, to this equation look like with this information. Here's the conclusion. All right. So if you look at all the functions f, so it's under this operator that becomes phi x, phi, uh, f not here. That's one example. Uh, in the following form, that f0 appeared in the answer, and plus, and all the kernel elements here, the c1, f1, c2, f2, where c1 and c2 are constants, like that. So many times, rather than going through that operator algebra to find all the general uh, solutions of this type, and we quickly inspect to figure out um, solutions in the kernel and one solution that solves this problem and everything else looks like this. It turns out for especially for the problems with the constant coefficients this method is very practical and efficient. So here's why. I think it's easy to show that this one actually is the solution of that and the statement is not actually talking about that only that all the uh, solutions of this equation is in this form and and all these uh, functions in this form with arbitrary c1 and c2 um, trivially satisfy this equation using the linearity so this is a non-trivial part relatively so with, that's what we're showing so let f be an arbitrary uh, function that satisfy this condition so it's stated here and we know one more function that does it, so I'm going to write it two things like this. f is a phi x. That's the function that we're looking at. And we know one more function, f0, equals phi x as well. All right? Using the linearity, we can uh, kind of simplify this one by subtracting both sides. If, or if you set these two things equal to each other, because phi x is the same, you can see we deduce that this two um, function after the operation is supposed to be the same, the phi x in here. And if you put in one side by subtracting right hand side function, we arrived at here. And we can um, put this factor out L using the linearity. So here we are using, as I moved up here, linearity to write this one like this. L as f minus f0 equals 0. All right? So this part of the technique doesn't work if L is not linear. So this structure here only works uh, for the linear operator. Now what we're looking at here is some function who is mapped to 0. That's exactly the definition of the kernel. So since 
this f minus f0 inside that operator is inside the kernel, and we know how the kernels are generated. All the kernels, f minus f0, is generated uh, with this f1 and f2 over the constants like this. So we know f minus f0 is in this form. So what we want to know is what happened to f, so f looks like f0 plus this kernel term f2 in here. That concludes the proof and one remark like, I'd like to make in here is that often we write um, notation like this f0 plus the kernel of that operator or um, this is notation for the, um, the collection of all solutions of homogeneous equation. So this is kind of one space and this is kind of shift so shifted by this amount. If this is an interval in the real line, and if you add number, uniform uh, number to everywhere, this kind of shift. And that same for two-dimensional and three-dimensional space. So we often call this one the shift of a kernel. Like this. So one way to visualize this algebraic thing in the geometric space. So with this technique that's introduced here in independent and dependence, and we move forward to the large class of differential equation in the second order and third order and observe as solutions and play with that and, and so on. So this is important structure to talk to the higher order linear differential equations. Well, let's take a look at an example. So this is the second order operator and this is our phi x. Right? So the idea of solving um, this equation is first computing the kernel. We have to first compute the, what the kernel here is. Let me just first identify what L is. L is the second derivative and two times no derivative, so that's identity. And first we have to figure out what the kernel of L is. That looks like because it's um, two and we looked at it as a, we have to look at it as a square square root of this number and it's a plus so it's coming from on sine and cosine right so it's going to be c1 sine of root 2x plus c2 cosine of root 2x so let me abbreviate it this way the kernel is always in this form where c1 and c2 are constants so i think i was in rush that let me just uh, factor it like this, and this is a plus uh, root 2i, and this operator i, and here's the minus root 2i and operator i. So these coefficient uh, in a complex form tells you, you know, how to write the, um, the kernel of this real valued function for the real valued function. So that's one thing. So if you can find a one um, special what they call particular solution and we can add this kernel to that one so find one solution so not fancy method you just go ahead and grab something and see if that have um, that works since our right hand side is what matters x squared is a polynomial maybe we'll play with the polynomial and try you know y equals some of the polynomials. So if you, of course, you don't want to try x to the third or higher, and if you differentiate it, it degree goes down, and you will have this x to the third all the time. So that's a bad idea. So I guess we have to try at least a quadratic like this, bx and c, and anything like this. Let's try this one and see what we get. So now our ly is the second derivative of this one, that becomes 0. Differentiating 2 times, that's 0. Differentiating 2 times, that gives you 2a. That's our second derivative there, and 2 times the function itself, which is ax squared plus bx plus c. That is supposed to work out as exactly x squared. and see if that's possible. So on the left-hand side, we have 2ax squared and coefficient of b, um, x part is only 2, 2bx, the 
constant part there is a c plus 2a. That's what we have. And this should work out as x squared. The polynomials are identically equal when the, all the coefficients are matching. So here we can see that um, a, to match this coefficient of x squared, must be 1 half. And b here, 2b, there is no x term in there, so b better be 0. And c is this part, the c plus 2a, let me write down c plus 2a, must be 0 as well, there's no constant term. So we've got these two values, but c is negative 2a, according to that equation. So if you put it in there, that must be negative 1. So uh, therefore, our f0, so-called the particular solution, is, is 1 half times x squared, that's our a, a value, and b is 0, and c is negative 1. It's negative 1 here. So you can verify that again if you stick that function and differentiate two times and add um, two times of this original function, and only x squared will survive. So this is the solution, particular solution. So we say the general solutions, um, always in this form, neg positive 1 half x squared minus 1, plus all the kernel element in here, and c1 sine root 2x, and c2 cosine root 2x. All the solutions of the function um, of this differential equation must be in this form. As soon as we put down two initial condition there, and it's going to determine this c1 and c2, and that corresponds to that one and only one solution that existence and uniqueness usually claims. So that was the end of um, the lecture about linear algebra on linear uh, differential equations.